And now let's stick on that issue with the Prime Minister because she's ruled out further uh, cuts to public spending, as we mentioned there. This comes as pressure continues to mount on her to U-turn on more mini-budget policies. Well, her leadership came under further scrutiny during a meeting of the 1922 committee where she was accused of trashing the last 10 years of work done by the Conservatives. Well, let's now speak to our GB News political correspondent, Tom Harwood. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I mean, some of the, the statements that have come out of that 1922 committee is extraordinary. I mean, one backbencher said uh, libertarian jihadists um, are wrecking the party. Uh, former Minister Robert Halford uh, said that Liz Truss had trashed blue-collar conservatism. I mean, what, what do you make of these comments? Yes, it looks like the Conservative Party is in fairly open warfare. Despite this meeting uh, intended to be a private meeting behind the closed thick oak doors of Committee Room 14 in the building behind me, just about every single word that was uttered during that meeting gets leaked out afterwards. And that's not the sign of a happy party. Clearly, there's a significant contingent on the back benches of the Conservative Party who simply do not agree with Liz Truss, who uh, want the party to take a very different economic path. Now, the people close to Liz Truss seem fairly surprised that there are Conservatives who are against tax cuts, who there are Conservatives who want the top rate of tax to be higher under the Conservatives than it was under the Labour Party. That's fairly bemusing to some within the circle of the Prime Minister, who uh, assumed the Tory party would be on board with the uh, sort of tax-cutting agenda. After all, it has been known as a low-tax party for quite some time, and that was a, a reputation that was slipping away as the tax burden was rising. But clearly there is a uh, growing schism there within the party. Some backbenchers jumpy at the state of the polls, others simply uh, not happy with the outcome of the leadership election too. And of course, the division within the Conservative Party has only made that poll gap grow wider. Conservatives speaking out against the Prime Minister to some extent gives Conservative voters the permission to speak out against the Prime Minister too. So it's a really unhappy situation within the Conservative Party. There's uh, quite a, a, a dark cloud over the state of the party right now. And uh, there are one or two avenues by which things may get better for the Prime Minister, but it has to be said they are narrow avenues and they require a turnaround in uh, market faith. They require a turnaround in growth fortunes and, frankly, they require Conservative backbenchers to give the measures that the government has taken the time to work. However, whether they will do or not is a fairly open question. I mean, on that point, I mean, ha has Liz Truss really been uh, given enough time? I mean, she, she won the leadership contest fair and square. And even though uh, many of the MPs, if not the majority, did not support her, she still uh, won the contest. And I mean, some people might argue that the, the infighting that is going on may well be contributing to the fact that the Tories are behind in the polls, not just this kind of so-called mini budget that many people are holding all responsibility for, for the crisis that we're experiencing. Yes, undoubtedly, divided parties do not win elections, and the refusal of some backbenchers to get behind the Prime Minister has clearly led to that sense of uh, uncertainty, to that sense of turmoil. Perhaps it's even fed into some of the market reaction, markets expecting that if this Prime Minister can't get through, for example, the eight pieces of supply-side reform we're expecting over the coming weeks, those are the big reforms to the way that the economy runs, not through tax but through regulation. Now, if there's a significant amount of deregulation, markets would expect that growth rates tick up, that those black holes in budgets get plugged through greater economic activity. However, if markets don't believe that the Prime Minister is able to get through that agenda, not able to get through, for example, planning reform or migration reform or childcare reform or all of these different reform packages that we were expecting to come in what was originally termed Operation Rolling Thunder uh, running up, to Christmas, if those packages of reform are unable to get through the House of Commons, and it looks like the market doesn't think that they are able to get through the House of Commons, well then it's no wonder that uh, investor confidence is lower because those are the key levers to deliver higher growth. 
And if this government doesn't deliver higher growth, it's one defining mission, then it's in for a lot of problems. So yes, absolutely, the divisions within the Conservative Party are undoubtedly contributing to these problems. I would tend to agree. Thank you so much. Our political correspondent Tom Harwood there.